the inspiration team director for Brutus Monroe, and I am really excited to create with you tonight. Also, speaking of the inspiration team, if you haven't uh, already seen it on social media, there is currently a design team call out for our inspiration team. So definitely take a look at that and get your application in so that you could possibly join our team. All right. We'll give maybe a, one more minute to get a couple more people on. Today we are going to use the Easiest Pie dies. They are the, um, the die of the month. If you are a member of the die club, which if you're not, you should definitely look into it. It is awesome. I love our dies. Um, and also we are going to use the striped, the stripes stencil. It's one of the stencil staples. And we are going to use that in a few different ways just to kind of show you some, some ways you can use that. And I think we should get started. What do you think? All right, so here we have our die set that we're going to use. And you can see there's all of these cute little options for your pie. You've got your pie slices, and I like that you've got them going both directions. You've got all of these different crust options. You've got your open pie for your cream pies, and you've got your lattice, and you've got the little vents in these ones. You even have steam. I think that's so cute. And then you've got your little pie server and your oven mitts and your um, rolling pin. So, said, are we tonight? What was that? Penny said, are we baking tonight? Penny, we are baking up some fun. I guess we're baking up some fun and some crafty shenanigans, right? <laughs> okay, so I don't know that you really need to see all the dies, but I'll kind of show you like, um, I guess it's worth noting that a lot of them have kind of a shadow piece, like you've got your rolling pin and then you've got the piece that goes over the top. And that's the same with a lot of the crusts. So lots of fun little dies in there. And we'll just kind of go through them as we go today. But first, before we get into all of that, actually let's assemble our pies and then we'll do the, the stripes, okay? So the first pie we're going to assemble, we're going to use this piece right here. And maybe I will show you that one. I'll show you some of the pieces we use. Hi, Tina. There's some little tiny ones in the corner. Hang on one sec. They are right up in there. Do I have them all now? Yep, I have them all now. Okay. So we're going to use this guy three different times. I've used it for all three pies. And then I used, this is your base for your crust. And so we used that on all three pies. And then you've got the, the layers to go over the top. So we've got like our lattice. Who did? Kathy. Hi, Kathy. And this is the one that's just got the little vents in it. That one cut out this one. And then there's one that doesn't have the holes in it because we also um, wanna have the backer to layer it on. So that's why we've got this piece so that we can have the filling behind the crust. And then we also have this just kind of open piece for like a cream pie. So we'll use that. And then I've got the little, we're not gonna use any of the slices for this card. I've got the rolling pin, both pieces to that. And I use, I'm using the oven mitt. And there are two pieces to that, but I'm not using the full um, the full thing. So this one was enough because it's gonna be coming off the page a little bit. Bye, Kathy, aren't they fun? I just think they are so much fun. Um, this is a little ice cream. You can make your pie a la mode if you'd like. And then, but we're not going to use that either. And we're not gonna use the little slices. We've got the pie server, which again, I am not going to use that this time. And we've got this crust that we're not gonna use this time that has all of the little vents. We are using the little cream. There's a little one for when you're using just the individual slices. And I don't think we'll use the steam tonight either, but we, I wanted to at least kind of go through them and show them to you. Okay, so. Now we can get crack a lacking on this. I love that our dies come in these envelopes. They hold on to them really well. Okay, so 
So now we can get assembling. So I just cut out some red for this one. Kelly says hi. hi Kelly, how are you? Hope you're having a great night. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two pieces together. Right, so we've got our layer. You can add a foam square if you want it to come up higher, but I kind of, I think having that second layer of cardstock on there is enough to give it a little dimension. Another thing that's fun with these is you could use um, like chroma glaze if you wanted to uh, have your pie have more of a wet and juicy look to it. Um, but in the interest of drying time, I am not going to do that tonight. Okay, so we've got our first pie pretty well assembled. Just have to stop fiddling with it and then we'll have it assembled. Okay, so now let's get our second pie. So what are all of your favorite flavors of pie? I would like to know. There aren't very many pies that I don't love. Not a huge fan of a uh, mince meat, I will say that. My dad used to love it, but I was never into that. There's probably people watching hey, going, what is that? Cream coconut cream. You know what, guys? I know there's a reason why I wasn't getting that on there. Coconut cream is delicious. I have to agree. We're going to take that off. Thankfully, it hadn't been too long. I forgot a step. Oh, We're going to... Oh, both of those are good. Pumpkin and key lime. We're just going to take a little bit. I just am, I'm not even inking my brush. I'm just using what's already in it. And I'm just going a, along the edge of the crust just to make it not look quite so underdone. We'll just make it look like it just got a little bit um, my favorite is brown. Pumpkin and banana cream. Darren loves pumpkin and banana cream. I like a little sliver of pecan pie and I like cherry pie a lot. No one else in my family really likes cherry pie. So when I do get cherry pie, it's kind of a treat. I like banana cream pie too. If you buy more off, it'd be all yours. <laughs> yeah, like I need that. Darren said I could have it all to myself if I did buy it. And I'm like, yeah, because that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, does cheesecake count? Ooh, I think cheesecake always counts. Does cheesecake count? That tops the rest for me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> cheesecake wins. Okay, so we've got the top of our pies, these two anyway, and we're going to make one more pie. You know what? We may as well just put them back together now. Ah, Tina. I know, right. Is there is there a lot of pie that isn't good? My dad loved lemon meringue pie. I have to tell you this because um, my dad has been gone for about two years now. And I just have been missing my parents lately. Just, you know, as the holidays approach, you just miss them even extra. And he was the type of guy... <laughs> First of all, I should preface this. My dad was much thinner than me. <laughs> my dad could sit down and eat an entire pie and he would still be about the size of a pencil. <laughs> and I think I got his sweet tooth and my mom's um, metabolism. What, honey? I think your dad would lose weight just chewing. Yeah, my dad could lose weight just chewing. But he would go, we would, you know, if our family went to a buffet or something, my dad would maybe get a drumstick and some mashed potatoes. And then the rest of the time, he would take the dinner plates over to the sal the dessert bar. And that was how he spent the rest of his time. And that <laughs> was his thing. He loved sweets. And uh, he loved lemon meringue pie especially. I agree. I like inked edges too. 
I, I do like them too. Um, I remember my dad would even like, if my brothers brought home a new girl when they were dating, um, my dad would ask him if they made pie and if they knew how to make a lemon meringue pie, it was his thing. Anyway, um, so I went to the store and I, I had never made one. So I, and I'm not even, like I said, a huge fan, but I was missing my dad. So I went to the store and there was a, a lemon meringue pie. There was only one there. And I felt like it was there just for our family so that we could just kind of wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> it was really cool. It was kind of a fun way to, to remember him. Okay. I was going to make this meringue, but I think this is more of a lemon, I mean a banana cream color. We're going to make it a banana cream pie. I did make a lemon meringue pie earlier. I'll show you the card that I made. Um, I posted it today. So if you use a glaze, you can do all kinds of fun things and you get a little bit more um, texture and a little more interest in your filling. So this was my homage to my dad. I made the little lemon meringue pie. I put a little bit of brown around the meringue so it looked like it was kind of like toasted like that. But, um, so this is candy coat that I have on this, yellow candy coat. Candy coat comes in several colors. Um, Chroma glaze is a lot like the candy coat, only it doesn't have the little iridescent flakes in it. So those, those are fun ways to add a little interest to your die cuts, whether you're making a pie or just using your die cuts in general. Glitter glaze is also another option if you like glitzy cards. I kind of went a little crazy with my, this is a fun um, panel. This is actually from the Halloween box. Um, I've been itching to play with that. So I foiled that up with our, uh, orange sketch, I think it's called foil. And I thought it turned out kind of cool. So, all right, so let's get going on our rolling pin and then we can go on with the rest of our card. So all of our little pies, I think are all pretty well done. And now if I can get a hold of this. Maybe we'll ink a little bit first. Let's ink that edge especially. I don't think we need a lot on this, but just a little bit. Now we can add it to our rolling pin. I hope I have it on the right way. Not, we'll have to turn it over. Oh, it looks okay, I think. I think I got it on there, right? right. Okay. So all of our dies are ready, our die cuts. So now we can do our, we'll play with our stripe stencil for a second. So one way you can use your stencil is just the way it is. One thing I will say about the stripe stencil is that because they are so, um, there is not a lot of room in between the, the lines. It makes it really movable and that's okay. I love that it has the thin lines, but I find it's very, very helpful to use pixie spray with this. So with that being said, let's do a little, a little something with that. Actually, let's do this first. Sorry. Let's, let me show you one thing I did that I thought was kind of fun. Just a really quick and easy way to use the stencil is to just use it in reverse. So I just took some of the Chroma Mist and I just sprayed on the stencil. And let's see if I can do this without getting it everywhere. I don't want any of that to get anything on it. I'll just lay that down right there. And then what I did was I just laid my paper right over the top. And I actually like the look of not having the full um, 
image, the full stencil image necessarily. I kind of like to just give the idea of it. So I'm okay with it if it doesn't get all of the edges, which, which I didn't, and that's just fine. So then we can use this. This is great. I have no problem with this. This is kind of a nice way to add some Beverly texture to a card. Hi. Who did? Beverly. Hi, Beverly. But now if we want to take it a step further, we can spray it again. <laughs> then I have to make sure I put this on the right way because I always I think it has to go this way, doesn't it? My brain does not think backwards very well. Hopefully we're going the right way. If not, then hey. <laughs> we don't want to spend that much time on this. Okay, let's see if we did it right. Well, no, we didn't. But that's okay, because I like that too. So now we went that way. Now we need to go, I guess it was this way. Let's see what it does. <laughs> I should have marked something on the stencil so I could tell where I was. Ah, that's what I was going for. I was going for the crisscross. But like I said, I'm, I'm good with it not covering the whole thing. Um, I kind of like that look of just some of it being done like that. Um, if you want the whole going down further this is kind of just another look at the same technique which is just super easy you saw how fast that was okay so now we're gonna this is where the pixie spray comes into play so let's see let's use i think i might have used one of the ones i had set aside let me see because i'm gonna put that there I should have one more, one more panel up here. Let's see if I left it somewhere. Well, easily solved. Let's just cut one really quick. So I'm just using um, a little bit of, this is perfect blend paper that I'm using. And I know after I move everything around, I'll probably find the piece that I originally cut, but since I don't know for sure, I'm just gonna cut one. Okay. So I'm cutting this three and three quarters by five. And actually, I'm probably going to cut that down after. So I could use it for two cards if I wanted to. Okay, so let's spray our I'm holding it about this far away, but I'm not going to do it where you can see me doing it. So I'm spraying right over my bucket and I don't want to get anything on my tablet. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll just put it on there normal. You can tell I already had some pixie spray on there because they're kind of sticking together. Hang on one sec. Okay, so now we can ha we have it all laid out and it'll be all right. I'm just gonna use my blending brush and I've, I'm just using what's in it, but what color it is, is um, Clear Skies from Simon Hurley. And honestly, because of the nature of how we're just making a pattern, you can go against the stencil if you want, but if you don't want to have that much, like you, you don't want to cause too much, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you don't want to make the stripes move any more than you have to, you can just go in the direction of the stencil and then it's a little easier. And I'm doing a fairly light layer. Because my goal is to make kind of a, just kind of a faded tablecloth look. Okay, we will revisit that color in a minute. So now, I'm going to take the stencil and I'm just going to turn it. 
Louis says hello, and so does Buddy. <laughs> so now the color that's mostly in this that we're using is Overzealous, which is also a Simon Hurley ink. I should tell you that the brown that I used earlier was also Simon Hurley ink, and it was Weeping Willy. We Weeping Willow, excuse me. <laughs> okay. So now we're just doing a light layer of the green. And again, I kind of want it to look um, like a faded tablecloth. So I'm not trying to be like, I'm kind of leaving an area here you can kind of see, because I don't want it to be completely even. Now that's a matter of preference. If you want to make it even, you can make it even, but I kind of want it mine a little bit splotchy. So now we've got the basic um, plaid started and it's pretty faint right now and that's okay. And you can go darker if you want to go darker, obviously. You can, you know, to each his own, create your own ending on that. But I'm going to show you a trick now that was kind of a fun, a kind of another fun way you can use your striped stencil. You can just go in and weave in and out. I have to start a little bit further up because I need it to be the width of, of my paper. Cool. Who did? Kathy. Oh, thanks, Kathy. So now we're just going to go in and out a little bit. Maybe. There we go. It's easier if I set it down. It looks like I only skipped two. So I guess we'll skip two in between the three. So I've got three over and two under, if that makes sense. We're just kind of weaving it in and out. So three over, two under. Three over, two under. I think we can do it one more time before we run out of width on our stencil. It's a little tight, but I think we can make this work. Okay. I don't think it's pulling so tight that we can't do it. It's kind of fun, isn't it? I, I actually, you know, I it's not my my original idea. I got it from just looking around on Pinterest. But I agree. I think it's a fun way to use your stripes on your stencil. Okay, so now I want to go with a little bit more, um, a little bit heavier of ink. Maybe not a lot, but a little bit. And I'm just kind of pushing it in there because like I said, I want mine to look splotchy. So you be the master of your own project and do what you want to do on yours. But I'm, I'm going for a splotchy, faded out kind of look. All right, shall we see what it looks like? Let's see what we got here. So now we've got this other line going through there too. Just kind of a fun way to play with it. You could even go one more if you really wanna go crazy, you could go another one and just have every kind of direction. So I already have this one cut down, so I'm just going to use it. Looks like I used a little more green on that one. So this is cut down to, let's see, it looks like it's just under two inches. It's like two and six eighths, I think. Tina said, wow. Kind of fun, huh, Tina? And then we are going to, we're going to put that on this paper. This white piece of paper is actually, it, you, you saw me cut it, I think. It was three and three quarters by five. So let's go ahead and the first thing I wanna do on this is I'm going to take some of my, actually let's use this. I just got this today in the in my uh, box from Brutus Monroe. I just ordered this. It's, um, it's the Tombow adhesive tape runner. So let's give it a whirl. Okay, 
good enough. All right, so I have cut some little strips of our aged wagon paper. No, farmhouse grain. Sorry, the aged wagon is brown, but it's the same wood grain kind of paper. I don't know if you can see that really well, but it's got this fun wood grain. Okay, so I cut it, they're, um, they're like a half an inch by, I believe it was two inches that I cut them to. And we're just gonna make our own little wood panel wall. And we're just gonna line those up against the background. And we're just about to the end of that line. And I have one that's a little thinner. Let's see if it fits. It's not gonna matter too much and you'll see why in a bit. Okay, so we've got that for our kind of backdrop. And then we're going to use the piece that we made for our tablecloth. And I probably should have put something, I wonder if I should put something behind it to make it kind of more evened out. I really don't know that it's gonna to matter too much. Okay, so maybe, I'm still off a bit for some reason, but we'll just cut that down a little. Be exact, exact, I just want it kind of to fit up in there. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna cut it after. Because you'll see why it's not gonna matter. There. Okay. So we'll just put that on there. Now we can just trim off that little piece. Okay, we got that on there. Now we can add our little piece that we made. So let's just do the same thing. And if you're wondering why I put them both on there, I kind of explained it, but I don't know if I explained it very well. I just don't want there to be a dip between this and this and where this is a little thicker cardstock. If I was gonna have one stick out a little more, I would want it to be the bottom because this is gonna be our wall. Okay, let's get this on there. Now what we're going to do, and I don't even know if I need it on the sides, but just to be sure, yeah, I did. I needed them on there. So what we're going to do is we're gonna cut this down because I just didn't want it to be just another, you know, um, setup of a table and a wall. I wanted to do something a little bit different. So we are going to just use these. These are the Elegant Essential, Elegant Essential Arches, I believe is what it's called, or Elegant Arches or something like that. Essential Arches, I think. I will look at it just a second. Let's look because apparently I don't remember. Essential Arches, Essential arches and they are from Spellbinders. Yep, Essential Arches. All right, so I've got a few layers of cardstock, so let's see if that went through on the first try. It'd be pretty impressive if it did, but no, we need to go through it again. And I, I pretty well expected. So it did take a couple of passes through our die cut machine, but that's to be expected when you use more than one layer. So now we can peel this off. Okay, so now I'll return that to its home. And now we will just add it to a card. So what I did, I had this piece of, um, this is Doodlebug part, card, uh, cardstock printed paper. I don't know exactly what set it's from. It was just a little scrap I had in my stash and I thought it was cute. So we're just gonna use it. Sorry, I don't know what one it's from. Let's see, let's just use some glue for this. That'll give us a little play. I can kind of move it around a little bit if I need to. What was that? Oh, Darren is removing the links that we don't want on there. Somebody's trying to hack in. 
trolling. I like it too. I just, I wish I could remember which collection it was from. Okay. I love those little tiny flowers. They're just so cute. And I love the scale of the flowers. They're just perfect for cards and whatever. Okay, so we've got our base. Ugh. Our base is ready to go. So let's start playing with our little, our little pies. Let's see where we want everything. Maybe something like that. Maybe we put two on one side. I always have to mess around a little bit, you know? I kind of want this to be coming off. So we'll probably glue it on and then I'll cut it down. And then just have our rolling pin kind of on there. I kind of like that. What do you guys think? Let's get that guy on there. Yeah, there's a love of a big tablecloth. Isn't that fun? Thanks, Kathy. Kind of like the vintagey feel to these colors. I think we can get it about right there. Thank you, Tina. And let's put a little foam on this one so we can have it stand out a little bit more, maybe. As long as it still looks like it's on the table, I'm happy with that. Let's see. That works for me. And then this one. Let's see, I think we'll put that one on there flat too. Just because we're going to have the rolling pin and the oven mitt in front of it. And this is going to be the tricky thing. I am not quite sure. Yeah, it's a great little vignette. Thanks, Candy. Let's put our... I'm wondering if we need the oven mitt. I kind of want it. Let's look and see. But sometimes, you know... Sometimes less is more. Let's kind of see what we think. You know, I kind of like it better without. We're not going to force it. I'll just save that for another day. Okay, so now we need to get a sentiment on here and maybe a little bit, a little bit of uh, something else. So we've got all of our little sentiments from the conversation clippings okay let's see what we got here i think we could do all kinds of things well you know what before we get into that let me show you something i wanted to show you uh, earlier so today i i told you i made a little order got my little order in the mail um i got the color vibe collection i got the brights and i got the bolts and these are really handy i already used these you could see that i used them on the card earlier this is from that collection. This is from that collection. The little flowers, the little hearts, um, the little enamel dots are from that collection. So I think we should break out some of this collection. It looks like it goes really well with the paper. And I think we could just put a couple of little doodads on there. I don't think I'll use the buttons for this one. But let's see what we have in here. I think we need a heart. Let's see what we got. Do we want a pink heart? Maybe we do two colors. We could maybe do red. Let me see. What do we have in here? There's so much, look at all of this stuff. There are tons of pieces in this. And I love that they, all, of, all of the little things coordinate. So you've got your washi tape, you've got your little flower bits. You can see how many come in it. 
You've got your enamel dots. You guys know how I love my enamel dots. And these are the, um, the buttons that I showed you. And then this is called um, chipboard bits. So super fun. Just a fun way to... I like the red better. Fun way to add just a little something. There's cute little tags in there. Um, I think we definitely need to use the hearts. Do we want to use... Nah, I don't like it with the rolling pin. So we'll use those. Now we just need to add our sentiment and maybe a couple of little enamel dots and we will be good to go on that. So let's do, do we want, let's see what we've got. We've got you bake me happy, calorie schmalories just for you, sweetest pie, your cutie pie, yippee pie yay, what's cooking, baked with love, your nicest pie, Love you more. Happy Thanksgiving. Blessings. What else have we got? Love at first bite. You like pie. I like pie. Mmm, pie. Thank you very much. Life is short. Make it sweet. I kind of like that one. Baking is happiness. There's no, well, that one's for bread, but it says there's no one better than you. You're the butter to my bread. I loaf you. Hello. It's a perfect day for pie. The secret ingredient is love. Hooked on the cook, I kiss better than I cook. Sweet. Good things come to those who bake. Always lick the bowl. I'm kind of liking the life is short, make it sweet. What do you guys think? Does that one work for you? I think that's what I'm gonna do. And I kind of like that it ended up right there because we can make a little flag piece on that if we want. And another thing you can do if you want your um, sentiment to stand out a little bit more. Actually, do I want the? Let's check it out. You can just put a little bit of washi underneath it. Do we want that under there? The one nice thing I, I really like about washi is that I can take it off again if I don't want it. So we'll just try it out first. Definitely needs to be trimmed down, but I kind of like the washi on there. I do think it makes it stick, stand out a little bit more. So let's do that. Let's see if that's short enough. Okay, and now we can finish off. Kind of want that under or just a little bit. Kind of groups them together a little bit more. And then maybe we'll put this little guy on a foam square. Let's see what we think of that. I have blue everywhere. <laughs> All right, now we just need to put it on our card base and we are good. And oh, I lied, we do want a couple of little you know I have to have my enamel dots on there. And where we have them coordinating and everything, it's just gotta happen. I know, I scared you, huh? And I didn't even thank you, I'm sorry, Darren. Thank you, Darren, for moderating. I really appreciate you. Oh, thank you for fixing it. And then um, also the link that Darren puts up will have a link to all of the products that I use tonight. And now we just have one more thing to add and we are done. Let's just add our cute little, 
Look, I've already used some. Surprise, surprise, right? Let's see, do one, some blue ones. I kind of think they're red ones. Let's do red. And we'll do maybe, should we do a big one over here? Maybe we'll do that. I'll do a big one there and a medium one there. And we are good. Isn't that fun? And that was so simple. You can get a good view of my, my blue thumb. <laughs> but really easy, super fun. You saw a couple of different ways you can use that stencil. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope that you had fun and that maybe you were inspired for something that you want to create this weekend. And I will be back next week with a new project for you. I'm trying to remember what it is. Oh, I know what it is. I'm going to be using the, um, the s'mores stamp set and die set. I don't know if I have the dice actually. For sure the stamp set, I'll have to look and see if I have the dice, but I am for sure using the stamps and we'll do a fun project then. Did I say dies? No, I said stamp. All right, sorry, it's been one of those days. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you always for your support and, and the sweet comments that you make. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you will join me again next week. Bye.